who can predict the future? Statisticians. Statisticians are the ones that can predict the future. Statistical research is about analyzing data. So we have some data at our hands. We might calculate some summary statistics, means, medians, variances. We might visualize the data. Uh, if we get super wild, we possibly conduct statistical testing or some mathematical modeling and then we interpret the results. And when we interpret the results, we of course discuss with the context experts. For example, medical doctors, climate scientists, uh, let's say uh, experts in certain field of sports. But research in statistics consists of many other things as well. If you think about the field of mathematical statistics, that is devoted to developing methods, new methods, tools that statisticians then apply when they analyze data. In the field of mathematical statistics, in addition to developing new tools, we also analyze properties of existing tools. Developing new methods that can be applied in analyzing data, these new methods are crucial like super, super important. But why? Well, think about building a house. If you build a house today, you need a hammer, right? But the hammer is not enough. You cannot build big fancy houses these days with just a hammer. The same with statistical analysis. I mean, when you analyze data, of course, you calculate sample means and maybe you apply t-test. But sample mean and t-test are just not enough today. The structures of the data that we store in the databases today, these are very complicated. And traditional methods, that are super good methods, but if you only rely on those, when you are analyzing new types of data, the results might be even misleading. I am statistics professor at Aalto University School of Science. What I and my research group do is that we develop new methods. We are the ones that build crystal balls that can be then used in, for example, predicting the future. When we predict the future, we are often dealing with data that is of serial nature. Think about, for example, daily maximum temperatures at some location in Finland. Let's take a tiny Finnish town, Inkeroinen. We measure daily maximum temperatures at Inkeroinen every day. The data that we obtain that's a time series, one point every day. And often when we are dealing with such data, data that is of serial nature, what we think is that there is some underlying stochastic process that can be applied in modeling that data. Stationary process is such process that the mean, the variance and the autocorrelations remain the same over time. So when I have an observed series of this type of process, I do not observe trends. I do not observe seasonal changes. I do not observe any drastic changes in variation over the time. I still might have serial dependencies though, and those serial dependencies I am using when I'm predicting the future. Think about the daily maximum temperatures in Inkeroinen. If I look at a very short period, let's say the daily maximum temperatures in July, this data might very well 
be reasonably stationary. So no big trends or seasonal changes there. However, there are definitely dependencies. The maximum temperature that I observed today most likely does depend on the maximum temperature observed yesterday. So stationary processes are nicely behaving processes. But the data we are dealing with is sometimes naughty, not always so nice and nicely behaving. There can be many types of deviations from stationarity. And one is that we might actually have data that has seasonal changes. Think about again the maximum temperatures in Inkeroinen, Finland. If we look at a longer period of time, not just July, we definitely see seasonal changes there. During the summertime, it's warmer. Then during the winter time, the maximum temperatures are lower. Summer again, it's getting warmer. Winter, oh, it's cold. Summer, winter, etc. And other thing that we often see when we analyze serial data is some kind of trend. It could be that the values are gradually decreasing or increasing over time. There could even be exponential trends. If you look at this data, this is quite naughty data, not nicely behaving stationary. I mean, you can see plenty of randomness here, but then there is an increasing trend. It's definitely not linear. Maybe it's exponential. I'm not sure, but definitely not easy to deal with this type of data and predict directly using this. So what we do often, of course, we start from this data. We try to check if we can fit some function here, like uh, around which the random fluctuations happen. Uh, we might transform the data. So make this naughty data nicely behaving. Then we perform the predictions first for this nicely behaving data. And once we have the predictions at our hands for that, we transform back and we obtain predictions for this naughty data and we see how far we are going. Also, let's think about the daily maximum temperature at some location in Finland. If we look at data from many, many years, tens of years, we can see some trends. At least in some locations, we can observe that the temperatures are slowly increasing, the average uh, daily maximum temperatures. And behind that is most likely the climate change. So the cold places are turning into warm places uh, also here in Finland. In addition to predicting the future, we are often interested in estimating the probability of rare events. Think about the daily maximum temperatures again, okay? We are maybe interested in knowing whether the daily maximum temperature exceeds some threshold level, let's say, during the next 10 years. If we want to estimate that probability, what we have to do is first to analyze the serial data of these daily uh, temperatures. We have to extract random fluctuations from the model. We have to see if there are uh, some changes in the process and take those into account. And after that, we go to the subfield of statistics called extreme value theory. Extreme value theory is the subfield of statistics that provides tools for assessing how rare is rare. 
Okay, so we have predicted the future and we have assessed the probabilities of some rare events. But sometimes we also, when we analyze serial data, we notice that something very weird has happened to the process. Maybe the entire process has changed its structure. The internal dependency structures of the process have completely changed over time. It can happen suddenly or it can happen gradually. The subfield of statistics that is devoted to these changes in, uh, let's say, serial dependency structures, that is called change point analysis. So change point analysis, it provides tools for detecting the changes, you know, is there a change or not in the process? Then when was that change when we look at the data? When did we start seeing some hints that, you know, the process is changing? And of course, when we have noticed that there is a change, when that change was, we also want to know how the process has changed. Maybe there is some huge environmental catastrophe that changes the climate like completely. Then when we look at the daily maximum temperature data, it looks totally different compared to what it looked previously. Then, you know, the entire process has changed. It's not only about increasing trends anymore, but the dependency structures of the uh, process uh, are not the same. We statisticians, we search, we look for structures in randomness. We are dealing with many types of random phenomena, but the structures in randomness enable us to model, enable us to for example, predict the future. I am statistics professor from Aalto University School of Science. I'm the wicked witch of the North with the ability to predict the future and to provide tools so that you also can predict the future and assess the rareness of rare events.